What's going on guys? Eddie here from Cordell Bag Reviews. Today we're gonna do another vlog. So really positive response in the last vlog. Today we're not doing any kind of like big ACO event or anything, but we're actually just gonna be doing our local switch holio blind draw. I'm gonna to try to focus, do a couple change ups today, uh, a little bit more on gameplay. So I'll be recording all the games and maybe talking through some gameplay analytics and whatnot. Uh, bags I'm bringing, I'm literally bringing like almost every bag I own. I like bringing like tons of sets here because a lot of locals come by, they like to try a bunch of different sets. So we'll be seeing what we're gonna to throw today. A couple things changing up for today's video. So I got a Gladiator Cornhole Glove, which I actually really like. I threw for with it for a while today. So I'm gonna try that out with my, you know, I have a, my hands sweat all the time. So I'm gonna try this out to see if it helps a little bit with consistency. And a couple of you commented, so I did get a gimbal. Um, for all you who don't know what a gimbal is, a gimbal is a thing you put your phone on. So when you're walking with your phone or vlogging per se, keeps your phone completely steady. So I'll be able to take more like steady shots or if I'm walking and talking, it just won't be like shaking at all. Um, getting some B-roll and some other stuff. So definitely try to put more into these vlogs, uh, invest a little bit to try to make them a little bit better. Hopefully you guys like this uh, local event content. I might be doing some local tournaments and stuff that I'll be recording and just talk a little bit more about gameplay or hopefully, you know, some of you that might not be able to get out and play events, uh, kind of live through me a little bit and have some fun. So this is kind of just a fun thing for me to do in between reviews and whatnot. And I kind of enjoy just having people on the camera and talking about some cornhole. So I uh, hope you guys enjoy these videos. I'll be at the venue soon, getting some warm up and whatnot, and then uh, we'll get into the games. Talk a little about, a bit about the format. That we are doing score magic today, which is score holio's way of actually keeping track of how many bags in on your percentages and whatnot. So hopefully, if that works out successfully, I'll have a lot more stats to give through about these games. Tell you exactly how I was shooting. Um, probably show you some of the good shots in the games and whatnot. But. Uh, yeah, I'll uh, catch you guys when I'm at the venue. So uh, thanks, guys. Hope you enjoy this, and uh, let's get into it. All right, what's up, guys? We made it to the venue. So we're here at Super Bowl in Ramsey, Minnesota. Uh, usually tonight we get like 25 to 30 people, so I, we've been inside warming up for a little bit. Um, I'll show you around the event a little bit, but uh, we're going to start out with knockout. So knockout, how we do it, it's kind of like if you ever played lightning in basketball. Um, you basically shoot a bag. If you don't make it in the hole and the person behind you makes it, you're out. Last one standing wins all the money, $5 buy-in. So something kind of fun to start is a little like warm-up thing. Um, after that, we'll start the switch holio we're actually doing. I said we're doing the score magic thing, so I'm stoked about that to get more stats. But, uh, but yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get in there and I'll show you around a little bit and uh, we'll get ready for the event. on the vlog. Are you ready to warm up for this weekend? Yes. You guys remember Luke from the last vlog. He's my partner. So we're playing on Saturday. Oh yeah, his back. Yeah, that's the only reason we definitely choked 20 to 13. It was only, only the back. So a little look at the arsenal today. We're going to be throwing, you know, I, I got new Surefires now. So I got Minnesota Cornell Surefires. Really floppy, like Typhoon level floppy. And you know, tried and true, Costellos. But we also got a bag full of goodies down here. So basically every bag you could think of. So now we're gonna get into the start of knockout. So here's kind of an example of the first person get eliminated. So Matt here misses his bag and DOP comes in from behind and makes his bag. So just like in Lightning, Matt is now eliminated. Uh, next player, Randy, misses his bag. And we see Clyde coming in behind and Clyde will end up making his bag too. So then Randy's eliminated and we keep going like this. Now we'll skip forward to me. So I haven't thrown a while here. So I throw it like crap. And uh, yeah, so who do you think's behind me? Yeah, that's the state singles champ, Patrick. So uh doesn't take a genius to think what he's gonna do here. He's probably not gonna miss. So one round in and I'm already out of knockout. But we'll fast forward here to top three. So we got DLP, Nick, and Troy. DLP misses here on the edge. And we got Nick, who Nick is going to knock him out. So now we're down to two players with Troy and Nick. Uh, once a player misses, it goes into, you know, sudden death. Next person to make it wins. So Troy's actually going to miss off the side. So now we're in sudden death. Next player to make it is going to win. 
Nick's got a chance to put it away here, and he misses off the side. So we're coming down to Troy at the end, and Troy's got a chance to close it out here. Hey, there it is. Let's go, Troy. All right, so I showed you guys the knockout game. Uh, <laughs> you know, th th it's exactly what usually happens to me, where um, I go in and haven't thrown for a little bit, miss my first bag, and the person behind me makes it. And then the people that make it to the finals missed like 20 times, or the people behind them didn't punish them. So it's a fun warm-up format, but uh, obviously it didn't do too well. But we'll get into the bracket here. I'll be posting uh, little clips of the gameplay, talk about some shots here and there, some decisions that I make, and then uh, go over you know the results, go over my PPR, because we're doing score tracking and whatnot, and show you guys how I'm shooting. So we'll get into there. I'll show you guys some gameplay. In the first interesting round of game one, I start by throwing my first bag in the hole. He actually misses his bag off the back, so I decide to go for a block here. So I throw a nice little short block in the hole. He actually ends up pushing my bag in here. So I go for the block behind to prevent him from pushing in. Uh, he ends up jamming into the hole. So I'm already got two bags in the hole. I'm up seven to two on the round already. I can either lay up and take a good chunk of points, or if I'm feeling it, I can go for the airmail, really try to punish this round. Uh, because we already got the lead 5-0, I decide to go for the airmail. Um, I throw a really nice airmail here, hit backside. It actually ends up hanging on the hole. Um, him hitting the board, I don't know if he was going for hard push, but my ended up falling, which ended up in a 10-3 round. Um, ended up getting us seven points. So there's a moment where you could choose to be aggressive and it kind of paid off. The game played about pretty standard from there. Not a lot of interesting spots until we get into the last round here. So we're up 17-9 at this point after some trades back and forth. He starts with one off the back. I end up making my first bag. He misses the left. I kind of use his bag as a bumper and cut right up the middle. Uh, plus five right now. He misses left again. Uh, I, I sh went for the hole, ended up blocking behind, so it was a good miss, and he actually misses off the back. So I go for one last little cut around the side and sneak in the back of the hole for a nice little 10-2-8. So we end up winning this game 25-9. All righty, so game one done. Um, I shot really well. I think I was a little over an 8 PPR. Uh, we're throwing my new Surefires. Um, I gotta tell you what, this glove, life-changing for me with my sweaty hands. Um, Surefires don't really kick too much on me because I'm not getting my sweat all over them all the time. Uh, it's really nice. So we won, I have to look at the score. I think it was like 21 to 5, 21 to 6 or something. Uh, maybe 21 10. I don't know. But first game down, uh, I think three more rounds of pool play to go. And uh, then we'll get into bracket. Hey guys, I just wanted to do a quick shout out to CJ Marquez, dude. He sent me this jersey. I don't know if you guys can see it really, but it's Johnny Cash smoking a cig. There's a famous photo of Johnny Cash smoking a cig. Uh, that he turned into this kind of like cool cartoon art dude really really cool designs he does more of his art posted on instagram i'll throw up his instagram over here really great really great guy thanks for sending me the uh the jersey man it's 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 awesome and it looks sick so and if you guys if anybody ever wants to send me anything you know i love wearing the stuff you guys send my p.o box is down in the description below uh really cool i love when you guys send me stuff and uh and i love repping it for for you guys to see so hopefully shout out to you cj man hope you enjoy seeing it in the vlog in one of the first interesting rounds of game two, we're up 12-9, and we're going to show the effectiveness of a blocker. So my partner Clyde throws down a blocker, makes Danny think about it, actually misses off the side. Clyde has a nice get around, but his blocker sticks there. Danny actually has a really great get around here, and even though Clyde left one short, that blocker's still sitting there, and it forces Danny to miss and push his bag in, actually. So even though Clyde didn't make all of his bags in that round that blocker actually ended up netting us three points just by getting in danny's way in the next round i decided to start throwing blocks as well as we've been trading out eight and ten point rounds very regularly i throw my first bag as a block and force him to deal with it he ends up pushing through very nicely i throw a perfect next block as well and if you can see this one with the block he bounces off to the right here i go for a cut left to right and miss it a little long but now he has to get this collect Ends up not getting it and bunching him up. I'm able to block behind, and he has to go for a hard push. Because he's not able to clean up those bags, just those two blockers alone netted me the two points on a round, even with a miss bag. A couple rounds later, we're up 17 to 11 now. He has first bag, ends up putting it in the hole. I'm sticking with my block plan and decide to block right in front of the hole. He blocks in behind, but I prevented him from sliding. I now go for a right to left cut and sneak in the back of the hole. My blocker's still standing. He blocks behind again. I decide to go for the no hesitation airmail and I hit the airmail drag. 
He has a nice two bag push here and I go for one last left to right cut, but we end up washing out 10-10. Even though he started with one in the hole and up three points, my blocker prevented him from sliding in and gave me the shot opportunities. After my partner gave up five points, the game's now 17 to 16 and they have first bag. We start the round by him just sliding in and me following. He slides in again the second bag and I follow in again. He's gonna make the third bag, but instead on this one, I'm just gonna lay a block in front and force him to try to block behind here. So he actually misses off the side, which gives me a really good opportunity to push through, which I end up doing for the four bag to get two points. So it just shows how blocks really force them to make the tough shots and push through your bags. After our partners wash out the round, we now have first bag up 19 to 16. I slide the first bag in, he actually misses the next one long. I slide the next one in as well, he's gonna follow me in, and then I do the third bag block like I did the round before. Force him to have to deal with the blocker even though I'm up the two points I need. He misses off to the side and I'm able to go fast side push all the way through again to finish up the four bagger and lock up the game. Uh, he ends up getting an eight there, so 12 to eight is four. We end up winning that game 23 to 16. So again, those blocks just really open up opportunities for you in the game. All right, game two done. Uh, game two, there's a lot of really good examples of, oh, you wanna be in the vlog? Oh. Heidi's in the vlog. Hi, Heidi. Hi. I'm sorry I choked. No, it was good. <laughs> it, was good good game. Game. it was a good game. It was a good game. It was a good game. But good. game two, so uh, I had a uh, really good examples of blocks, the reason that blocks are good. Cause uh, we were kind of trading back and forth like 10 point washes and then I just went a block, he pushed through a block and then he missed and then I could push through multiple times. and. There's a thing called like the third bag block. You basically make the first two in, throw a third bag block, force them to go and then push to finish. And it, it just, it's, it's really demoralizing to an opponent. So I have a couple of good examples of that, but we won that one 21, 13, something like that. So good game, but uh, we'll get in for game three. Blake wants to be on the vlog. So, hey, here's up, Blake. <laughs> hey. so he's been playing ACO. And he's just really bad at it. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> no, but he's a carpet guy. So he bought, my other set of dominators. Oh, what have you been throwing? Mercs? Uh, Mercs mainly. Yeah. So so he he used to throw Vipers and now he switched to carpet bags. So that flop roll, I'm gonna tell you, it has really good results. Cause everybody around here throws fast bags, you throw a block up, nobody knows what to do. Oh, yeah. So I mean, lesson, learn how to throw the flop roll or blocks, it's really, really good. So how are you shooting so far? Just doing all right. Probably got like a nine, nine and a half feet feeler so far. Yeah, I think I'm doing well. Yeah. I'm throwing a lot of vipers tonight, so it helps. I'm just trying to get used it to it. Yeah. So, all right. Well, good luck, you guys. Yep. Sub to the channel. <laughs> <laughs> In the first interesting round of game three, I'm shooting against the single state champ, Patrick. He throws the first bag as a block. I end up blocking behind, but a little bit left. He's able to push into my bags and knock his bag in. I go to try to just push through, but I end up missing the left and kind of jam it up. He's a, he jams up behind me, and now is where the cut shot really cuts into place. I'm able to loop it to the right and sneak it in that right side of the hole. He finishes up sneaking in as well, but this angle that I'm able to put on the cut, I'm able to hit two cuts in a row to be able to limit the round 10 to eight to two points. And uh, having that cut shot in the arsenal is really helpful when they start trying to block up your side. A couple rounds later, my partner had given up a six, so we're now down nine to two. Uh, but I got first bag as she just scored one point. So I'll start off sliding one into the hole. I would say with Costello's, I am missing the blocks I had a little bit with my surefires, but he misses off to the side. I'm able to slide in again. He slides in after. Now here I just let one go a little bit and miss to their right. He ends up sliding in as well. And here I throw a little short block. And he has an option to do different things here. He can go for the slide through to wash, he can lay on the board to wash, or he can go for the cut shot to try to take some points here. You know, he decides on the greedy route and goes for the cut shot and ends up sliding off the back. So that kind of shows an option here. When you have an option, you go for the aggressive one. Sometimes it doesn't pay off and you end up giving us away two points to make it nine to four. Now in the next big round, after trading some points back, we're down 13 to nine. He starts off missing a little bit short. And I actually go for a cut jam into it. So I steal away the middle of the board. He ends up pushing me in and blocking behind. And I miss off the right. And now here's a big case on why it's important to keep your composure. He misses one, I sneak one up the middle. Now he misses one left here. Now I have a couple options. I can slide, I can go for a cut, or I can go for an airmail. I've been practicing my cuts a lot. Even with these fast bags, I'm able to cut those in and he kind of gave me a cut bumper. So I go for a big cut shot here. After I make it, 
even though I missed a bag off the back, because I stayed focused and didn't let it compound, I ended up sneaking away with three points on this round. Now here's the round that I'm not so proud of, but we're up 16 to 13 here. I have first bag. I ended up missing the first bag to the right a little bit. He goes in. I then follow him in. My bag's still hanging on the right side a little bit. He blocks behind. I end up trying to push through with a little bit too hard to the left, end up sliding off the back and pushing him in. And then he slides in. And then throwing a little bit too hard, I miss off the back again, giving myself a four. And he makes the four bagger to get the eight point round to take the game 21 to 16. So it just goes to show you got to finish your rounds and you can't give up those big points. All right, so we finished game three. Game three, uh, I choked hella hard. So we were, it was, uh, I was playing against the current state champ in singles, Patrick. He's one of my good buddies. Uh, but we were both shooting really good. I shot an 8.4 PPR, but I had a four in the last round. I had one hanging on the hole. He had a, like three good get arounds, and I just kind of missed two off the board. And I gave up an eight to lose. We were up 16 to 13, and I gave up an eight. So it's just, man, you, like, so shooting great all game, it's just, it's very easy to all of a sudden, you know, give it away so just uh those mental mistakes is why i come to these things you know you're just practically trying to get rid of those mental mistakes and just really focus on uh staying consistent in your rounds so it was a good game 21 16 i'm still shooting got for the day i'm shooting 8.5 ppr average so this this glove man is really giving me some confidence so throwing well we threw costellos that game uh felt good so keep going you know it's just pool play anyway so you get ranked in the score holio it doesn't matter yet so it's just good practice so but yeah, so uh, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Chris, how'd it go? Uh, yeah, that was really good. You throwing well? Yeah. yeah. No, no, that time, no, Danny was on fire. Oh, Dude, I, Danny gets in these runs where he just freaking kills you like crazy. Four bag after four bag. Really? I, I, if I got one or two in, it was good. So that yeah, D DLP, man, secret weapon. It was secret weapon. Yeah, there's still yeah. plenty of Heidi, how'd it go? How'd it go? Good. We we won. Yeah, sorry. I know. Yeah. I can't do that. But <laughs> two four baggers. Yeah, well, Heidi's good, man. Heidi, Heidi's the best. Oh. For game four in pools, unfortunately, there's not that many interesting rounds because sadly, my buddy Matt here I was shooting against just was not shooting that well. Um, I start off with one in. He goes front board. You know, I just keep shooting. I put up a block. He ends up throwing off the back. They're throwing vipers that are fairly fast. You know, I push in and sit on the hole. Um, he ends up missing off the board again. I just go to try to slide in and actually miss it a little bit short. And he misses off the board a fourth time. So we ended up with eight points that round. We were up 4-0 to start this. We're up 12-0 now. The next round that we shoot um, kind of goes the same way. So I start off with the first bag in the hole. He's actually able to follow me in here. Um, and I just stay nice and consistent to run the surefires right up the middle, uh, make the second one in. He ends up going off the back. And I just stay consistent right up the middle. Um, he ends up sticking on the back here. I finish up my four bag. And then he throws off the back once again. So a 12 to four, we end up getting eight on this round to go up 20 to zero. And then the round directly after this, my partner got one point to get us uh, the 21 to zero victory. All right, game four is over. Let's walk outside here. Um, we, that one was uh, quick because I, I shot a 10 PPR. Mike, you want to be on the vlog? How are you shooting? Pretty good. Yeah? Yep, yep. You, how many games you played so far? Three. And you 3-0 or? Mm, one, two. Okay, not bad. Um, I mean, it's all about bracket anyway. So, but game four, uh, it was quick. I only shot three, two rounds, I think. I had a 10 PPR. I went 8-10. The guy was shooting against went 0-4. So I, you know, got eight and then, or no, I went 8-12 and he went 0-4 and I got 8-8. Eight, eight, and my partner got a couple points in there. So a uh, quick, easy win. So other than, I mean, if you guys don't know, I'll put the leaderboard for, for score Julio up here. But uh, basically, even though I lost the third game, I scored 16 points. So... It's still a decent amount of points. So right now I'm first in the standings. Everyone's got to finish their games. But basically it's going to finish out as, you know, how many points did you finish with? And then it'll rank you one to, I think we have like 25 people or something. I'll have to check the standings. And then uh, basically one will get matched with one under halfway. So 
I don't know, if we have 25, then one will get 13 or something. And two will get 14 and all the way down until you get a partner, and then we'll play a double elimination bracket. So I'm throwing really well. It's fun to finally throw well. I mean, I, I think on the night I'm shooting nine PPR or something. I shot like eight, seven, eight, five, eight, three, and 10 in the four games. So throwing super, super well. So I, I'm sure you saw maybe some com- comments on my YouTube videos that I was like, you know, struggling with my throw in a lot of my reviews, which you're going to see more reviews coming out that I'm still struggling with my throw. But now I got it more dialed in. The glove definitely helps. I'm a lot flatter. Uh, I threw surefires again that game. The boards are just really quick, so surefires are playing good. Uh, we'll keep running it up. So I'll get some more footage of everybody inside. We're just having fun, having a good time. Um, it's a good event. We get a good turnout here. And our, our group here in Minnesota is just really, really solid group. So really fun people to be around. We'll get some more footage and uh, catch you guys soon. In the first round of winner's bracket, we're matched up against the team that's probably going to win the event, uh, Patrick and Randy. I'm shooting against the state champ again. Uh, I put this round in there to show you that I just was not throwing well. I missed the first one past the hole. I throw the second one off the back. Third one, I missed right again. And fourth one, I can't even make it in the canal. So I got very lucky here that he missed one to the left there. But I'm still giving up a five. So the game, we were down 10-4 to four very, very early on. In this next round, now down 14 to 4, I finally start to show a little bit of life in the match. He starts out with a bag that hangs on the left side. I hit a nice little cut shot here to sneak in the right side without touching his. He hits the nice collect push. I follow it up with sliding it in the hole. Now he actually misses one here to the right. So if I finish up here, I can at least get two points. I make the next one in the hole. He slides in, and then I'm able to finish up for the four bagger to get the two points to get us to 14 to 6. Now the very next round will be the last round of the game as my partner leads off the round a little bit short and to the right. His guy then throws a really nice block shot right in front of the hole. My partner misses off the back. Great replace bag by Randy keeping the block there. Troy then has a nice push through shot to make it four to six on the round. Randy with another nice good block. Troy front boards it so all Randy has to do is push through for the 12. It'd be 12 to 4. They get 8 points, and they win the game 22 to 6. All right, guys. So um, first round of bracket came out. And uh, so if you've never played Switch Holio before, uh, we got, you know, let's just say, you know, like people are close to the middle, and they know they don't want to be in the bad spot. So they throw a round of pool play. Like someone who averages, you know, 8, 9 will throw like a 2 PPR, 3 PPR just to make sure that they get in the bottom and get a good partner. There's not a lot you can do to prevent it. It happened. So this, I played against the state champ again, and he got paired with a player who's, you know, not, you know, bad. So, you know, I and I'd say actually tonight's probably the most balanced the teams have been. Um, there's a lot of really good teams, like good player with moderate player and two middle of the ground players together. Like all the teams seem fair. But we played against, you know, uh, the obvious favorite to win the first round. Um, you know, just because of the fact of the state champ took third in the bracket and the dude tanked and got 16th. So he got paired up, you know, stuff like that happens. Uh, I mean, I shot fine. You know, I shot like, I don't know, uh, eight PPR again, 7.5 PPR. I think that game. So not as good as I was doing in pool play, but that happens when you get to bracket, you know, and you're shooting against such a good player. You know, we had a couple messy rounds here and there. Hopefully I could show you guys some of the gameplay. Uh, there's a couple good rounds, but I mean, I have a I have a good partner, you know, moderate partner, and you know, and then they have a dude. He, he, he's all of a sudden, you know, after getting a three PPR in a game, he's shooting four bag, ten, four bag, you know, so stuff like that happens. Whatever. So we're down to losers round one, but we got a tournament coming up this weekend. So I'm coming here for practice, and I feel like I'm getting good practice in. I feel like I'm throwing well. I'm really confident. I'm having fun. Good good people. Good crew. So even if we lose the next game, we're down to losers. Even if we lose, I'll stick around. Play some cash games, hang out with the people, get some drinks. You know, it's just, it's just, that's the great part about blind draws, guys. You come out, you never know what's going to happen, but you just try to have a good time. So, so we lost the first one. You know, I'll try to keep updated with the brackets on the screen, try to show you where we're at and whatnot. But um, going into the next game, if anything, we'll just have fun. Try to keep up my 8 PPR. If I shoot an 8 PPR on the night and um, lose games, that's why I like that we're keeping stats because, like, I feel like I'm shooting well and uh, the stats prove that I'm shooting pretty well. I mean, 8 PPR over. 
you know, five games is really solid. So if I can keep shooting like that, um, I don't really care if we lose too much. It's just good practice. So um, I'll catch you with you guys uh, after the next game. In our first round of Noden, our loser's bracket game, we're down five to one, where my opponent starts off with the first bag in the hole. I follow him in. He ends up missing his next bag off and to the left. I just stay consistent up the middle, a little bit on the right, partially hanging in the hole. I could go for the drag if I wanted to, but after that bully, he ends up pushing my bag out of the way. So I just go for the slide in. Currently up seven to six here. He misses off the side and I'm able to finish it with the slide in barely there to get the 10 to six, to get our four points back to make it five to five. In the next round I wanted to show, we we're down seven to five and I made a couple bad choices here that cost me a huge round. So he misses to the right. I kind of block behind, take over the middle a little bit. He misses to the left and gives me a nice channel and I should have gone fast side here, but I went slow side instead and ended up kind of jamming up the middle. I mean, I still have middle control so I can go fast side, but I go for a hard push and I get them both up to the hole, but they're still kind of clogged and none of them have fallen in. He ends up blocking behind. So I decided instead of air milling to go for a big cut push, which is a pretty risky shot. And because I missed to the right, none of my bags fell in. And I still got a point three to two, but I missed out on a huge opportunity that a couple decisions could have negated. In the next round, I'm gonna show we're down 12 to six and they have first bag. He throws his first shot and leaves it a little bit off to the right. I am able to go straight up and in. His next shot, he throws again off to the left a little bit, leaving me just a canal to go in. I actually throw it a little bit too hard into the left. And it's kind of stuck up on the hole a little bit. He's able to sneak in. I do a quick reset and just stay sliding in. So currently seven to five. And he actually misses off the board. And even though I've been throwing pretty bad, I am able to capitalize on this one to get a 10 to five and get five points back to make it 12 to 11. We're now up 15 to 12 when I have first bag. Throw the first one a little bit deep and happens to skip over the hole, but it's hanging on the back of the hole just a little bit. He's able to throw a nice little block right before the hole, and I just throw a nice little block behind. He ends up missing one off the side here, so now I'm thinking about actually going a big push and just pushing through the whole thing. So I switch to the fast side and push the whole pile in, and it actually pulls all three of my bags in, even off the back. I go to then push through, but I knock his in and don't push it all the way through, but I get that 10. He got to go in to limit me to one. He ends up just sticking it on the front of the board. It still stayed on the boards. So we were able to get three points there to make it 18 to 12. Going into this round, we're up 18 to 15. Ron puts the first bag kind of in the annoying blocker spot right on the front of the board. Troy kind of follows suit and misses a little bit off to the side. Ron follows that then, but kind of pushes his front blocker a little more central. Troy puts in a nice bag blocking his little canal. Ron makes a really nice cut push to get both his bags pretty close to the hole. Troy does what I think he should do, just block behind again, force Ron to hit the hard shot. Ron goes up for it and hits a really nice double push. This is when Troy asked me, do you have to be, do I have to be in the hole to prevent the game? And I said, no, because even if you miss, we're still alive. So let's go for the push, try to get two of them in. So he goes for the hard push to try to wash out the round, hits a really nice shot, but it kind of stops close to the hole. So they get four points and take the lead 19 to 18. Going to the last round, we're down 19 to 18, and they have the first bag. He throws a nice first bag and slides right in. I have a good response right up the middle and slide behind him. Second bag, he actually misses off the back, so I instantly know if I make all four bags here, I get the three points we need. So I make the second one in. He actually leaves it on the front, so I actually go for a block here and force him to have to try to make a very difficult shot in order to not lose the game. He pushes into me and keeps it close, so all I have to do is board it without knocking any bags in and we get the three points we need. A little bit close sliding up there, but I'm able to board it and get the eight to five on the round for the three points to win 21 to 19. All right, so first game of loser's bracket, we won, played against a team that we definitely should beat. I actually threw terrible, I think, so I think I probably threw, I don't know, I have to look at the stats. It felt like I threw like a six or a five. I mean, I just threw bad, I don't know. I don't know why, it was like, it's like kind of one of those things you play to your competition. So like I was playing against somebody that I'm like, I should, I should be easy peasy. And I just like missing easy shots here and there just stopped following through the same way I was earlier. And I just thinking too much. So we got the win, but uh, whatever. So we'll pick it up in the next game. Um, you know, throw some highlights from that game, but wasn't too many, <laughs> but we won. 
So whatever, I think we got to win like four or five more in a row, but just have some fun. So catch you guys in the next one. We pick up in game two of loser's bracket, where we're up eight to one. We're throwing Vipers now as my partner wanted a faster bag. So I slide the first one in. He actually misses to the left a little bit. Now I immediately go for the cut shot and try to sneak it in the side. Having that cut shot really helps. I can even cut Vipers. He's able to push me in, but I'm able to cut around the side again. He sneaks in the side again, and for a third time in a row, I'm able to cut around the side without touching his block. He ends up leaving it a little short, giving me four points on the round, putting us up 12 to one, which is having that cut shot, even with super fast bags like that, really helps when they lead that, leave that short block in front of you. In the very next round, we're up 12 to one, and my partner uh, was front boards the first one, and they're able to make it in. He then goes for the next one, happens to front board this one as well. I try to give him some encouragement and tell him to throw it a little bit harder. I think he's just not following through as hard. Throws the next one, good speed, leaves it next to the hole. His opponent's able to bully him out of the way. So it's currently 7-1 to one on the round. Troy's able to finish up, give him 4 points, and his opponent's able to finish up as well with the 10, giving a 6-point round. So now we're up 12-7. to seven. In this round, we're now up 12-10, to 10, and they have first bag. He throws the first run a little bit right. I go for a bully and kind of bully and still block, really taking away his lane. He goes for the left side of the hole and gets some of the bag in there, but then I'm able to go for a cut push. I'm able to get one of the bags in while still kind of blocking. He then throws the next one to hit mine and my other bag falls in, now up six to three on the round. I go to try to block behind, but I actually miss a little right, giving him an alley to push. And he hits a nice push here to get eight points. Now in this position, I have a couple different options. I can go for an airmail, I can go for a cut, or I can just lay on and wash the round. The airmail is pretty risky because he's hanging in pretty far. And I am using Viper, so a cut's pretty difficult. But I feel pretty confident in my cut, especially using those back right bumpers. So I decided to go for the cut shot, as it could really be a momentum swinging shot. I go for the shot, and I happen to make it, sneaking in the back side of the hole, which is a really good momentum booster and gives us two points to get us up 14 to 10 now. In my next round up, we're up 14 to 12, so they have first bag. He throws a really nice block. I go to push through. I knock him in and get most of my bag in the hole, so pretty successful, I would say. He then throws his next one and collects both of us, and I'm able to follow behind him. He mixes his next shot to the right a little bit, which gives me room for a bully. So I try to throw into him, and I bully him out of the way decently successfully. He does miss his last one right, so I'm able to get in for the four bagger to sneak out four points which puts us up 18 to 12 and in good position to win the game. In the last round, my partner gave up a six. So now it's 18 to 18 and they have first bag. He makes the first one in. I throw my first one a little bit to the right and it sneaks past the hole. He throws a second one as a nice blocker. I go to push through and then miss that one left, kind of overcompensating. He throws a nice push shot here and able to collect both and I need to be in. And I sneak to the right so the game is already over and he makes the four bagger just to ice it was a tough loss. We really threw well that game, and I thought we had a really good shot to win. All right, so we got an early night. <laughs> we lost uh, the next game in losers. Um, I had an 8.5 PPR, so I'm not disappointed. I shot well. I mean, we were throwing. We switched to Vipers because he likes a faster bag, and I don't know. He said there was a lot of commotion down by him. Um, just had a couple bad rounds, you know, a couple, couple twos. You can't have two twos and some fours and... I four bagged a bunch of time. I had like an 8.5 PPR that game. So happy with the way that I shot. You're a DLP in a hunter top. <laughs> <laughs> DLP. Um, so whatever. Night's over. But we'll play some more games for fun. Again, this is just practice for this weekend too. And um, Either way, I, it was a fun time. You know, it's always fun to play. I would say on the night, I have to, I'd have to add, a, I'll add all the stats up and stuff and I'll throw it on the screen. I feel like I shot 7.88 PPR on the night in seven games. So I'm very happy with shooting an APPR, throwing four different kinds of bags. Um, just felt comfortable. Um, so hopefully that leads over into Saturday, you know, and uh, keeps shooting good. But it's fun, fun doing another vlog. Hopefully you guys got something out of some of the gameplay and some of talking through some of the uh, thoughts that I had in some of the shots, you know. I, there's a lot of opportunities. and It's about where do you take your risks and where do you feel like you can take risks, where do you go for a cut and airmail, that kind of stuff. So hopefully you get something out of this video. But um i'll probably vlog the tournament this weekend too just try to do some more of these you know i, I think it's fun to hopefully you guys could come with me in my, my my journey trying to learn how to how to play this game at least uh at least get more consistent at it so 
appreciate you guys stopping by for the vlog. If you like this, please comment down below. Let me know if there's stuff you want me to change, stuff you want me to work on. Um, if you like the format, if there's anything I should do more of, less of. But uh, I think the format will be fun. There's some way for me to hang out and talk to you guys. So um, appreciate it, guys, and hope you have a great rest of your week. And I'll catch you in the next video. Have a good one. Thanks, guys.